Great. Got the audio synced and we're good to go. So hello everybody. My tripod is a built tilt a built. Hello. I missed an upload last week because I'm just so smart. But the, my videos have been doing really well currently. So this one, the video from last week is currently one out of ten. And so was the um week before it, which is actually really cool. So Getting into the main part of today's video, I know I've, I've become a lot like a um, portable emulation news. Like I've been talking a lot about the news and upcoming stuff, but I haven't actually done anything in regards to me and portable emulation. So I'm going to start going back to that. But today I really wanted to talk about this device, the Odroid Go Super. It's an Ubuntu based handheld retro gaming console and it's releasing sometime in 2021 you'll be able to purchase it at the end of January and it'll be around $80 so I'm just gonna discuss the specs of the device and if it's worth it compared to other devices coming out this year like the GPD XD2 and the uh, Pal Kitty X18, and also the consoles already out, like the Retroid Pocket 2. So someone said that it looks like a Switch, but you know, really looking at, it, I'll put a picture up on screen, but it does not. It it really doesn't. It looks more like a um, Retroid Pocket 2 than it does a Switch. I don't know where that idea came from. It's a five-inch handheld, a built-in. Korea in South Korea I'm pretty sure um, it's built by Korean hardware company hard kernel who's previously been in the area of low-cost Linux portables which this is Ubuntu and I'm pretty sure that's let me research it it's a Linux distribution based on Debian composed mostly of free and open source software yeah so it's really good version of Linux, I'm pretty sure. So the Odroid Go Super runs Ubuntu 20.04 LTS in the emulation station front end, meaning yes, it supports a wide range of classic gaming content from the likes of Nintendo, Sony, and Atari, which is pretty cool. They pitched the Super as an ideal developer's gaming gadget for 2021. It's small, performant, and ch rather cheap. The Odroid Go Super is a larger, more powerful version of the Odroid Go Advance, which was a 3.5 inch handheld created by Odroid in 2019. And the new model is clearly better in apparently several ways. So it has a larger five inch screen compared to the 3.5 inch screen running at a 854 by 480 pixels. It's not four by three as retro gaming's aficionados tend to prefer. I mean, stinks, but come on. If you, I mean, you have an emulator, you could probably put it at four by three. It has a large 4,000 milliamp, uh, milliamp hour battery, which uh, gives more gaming time, especially on low powered consoles like emulators like the SNES and NES. If you're trying to play those, you'll get a ton of time out of this thing. It comes with two analog sticks, a D-pad, and four face buttons. So it's built around the same quad-core Rockchip RK3326 ARM Cortex-A35 processor and ARM Mali G31 MP2 graphics as the smaller uh, advanced model. Similarly, it's also paired with a modest one gigabyte of DDR3L memory. There's also a negligible, negligible amount of internal storage to house the bootloader and the OS that it runs. So it's not the most powerful Linux device you can carry in your pocket, but you have to remember that it's designed for playing old era console games, not crunching through your code compiling workflow. It has a spring loaded micro SD card slot, which acts as the primary storage, which is actually great because, you know, plopping an SD card into a computer and just putting files on there is way better than hooking it up via USB. There's a headphone jack. There's a speaker, a volume rocker. There's a USB port and a DC barrel jack for power. It's gonna come in two basic colors, dim gray and clear white, AKA transparent, which is pretty cool. It's a, it's a fairly nice color. It's not clear 
uh, based on the article I'm reading, if it's going to come in, it's going to come with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, or whether those capabilities will be offered through a small USB dongle shipped with the device. Let's see if we can find the specs, or like what things it'll be able to play. It's in line with the Retroid Pocket 2, but the Retroid Pocket 2, I'm pretty sure is like a little bit smaller. I'm pretty sure it has like a 4x3 screen. So let's see if we can find what consoles you can play. So it's using, since it's using the old RK3326 chip, it can emulate everything up to Nintendo 64 and possibly a few of the best Dreamcast games and PlayStation Portable games. So it can play um, a lot of old games like N64, NES, and SNES, um, PSP, some Dreamcast, uh, PlayStation, and PlayStation, and Atari games. Uh, since it's uh, Ubuntu, like a form of Linux, you're gonna have to find the right emulators that work, but that shouldn't be too hard. So this thing is $20 more than the Android, Android, Odroid Go Advance, which is currently selling from Hard Kernel for $59. Uh, but it's probably gonna go down in price. Oh my god. It's probably gonna go down in price once this thing releases. This thing does not look... That's not very appealing. Oh my god. So the older Advance didn't support, like, Nintendo 64. Uh, from what I can tell. Let me check. Oh my god, they're using stock sounds from iMovie. From what I can tell, it can't, but maybe I'm wrong. It seems that... Hard Kernel and Retroid, and the re company that made the Retroid Pocket 2, uh, I think it's Retroid, are aiming to stay in the market that they're in, like the um, cheap market, cheap $80, you know, it's not that cheap, but compared to other high-end portable emulators and portable Android devices, yeah, that is, and portable Linux devices, it's cheap. Like the GPDXC Plus cost me $200, uh, so $80 is a steal. So this device is for the people who, like they said, it's, um, let me find what they said. It's like a developer's device. Ideal developer's gaming gadget for 2021, which means that they're trying to get it to like sell it to developers and stuff who want to make games or make emulators for this. But it also seems like they're trying to capture the market that Retroid has done so well with their Retroid Pocket and Retroid Pocket 2. Uh, in the cheap, like, place they're in. Let me check how much the Retroid Pocket 2 is. Okay, no, it's it, goretroid.com, yes. Uh, it's currently on sale for $80, but it's been on sale for, like, two months. So if you want to buy it, get it now. Just in case. They have it in a bunch of different colors. They have these, like pictures of these colors like fire it's transparent i mean it's translucent but they're not available in those colors so that's annoying i mean i like the orange the best i don't know why i'm saying this like i'm gonna buy it so it's currently at 80 dollars, which is the same price as this device is gonna be um and this device can play games like they can play up to n64 games I don't think I can play any Dreamcast games. Um, so I'll put the photo of the emulators this thing can play on screen right now. Uh, I'm really bad at naming files, so I end up just smashing my keyboard. Wee. Okay, Ugh, saved as a WebMP file. Okay, WebP, not WebMP. I'm not gonna buy this device um, because I don't really see a purpose to. So really, I'm not gonna buy this device. There's no point for me to buy it. I have a device I can play all of these devices, like to play all of these emulators and more. So I'll wait for something more powerful like the GPDXC2 or the Pauka DX18S to come out. So once those, once one of those comes out, I'm gonna buy it. Hopefully it won't take like a month to get here and I'll do a video on it. Probably unbox it and then maybe like a week later, I'll do what I think of it. That's probably what I'm going to do. Um, getting this, if you want to buy it, really depends on if you want a device like this or if you just, if you want 
a device that can play all of your retro games. Also, like I mentioned, the difference between Linux and Android can swing people some ways or the other in the form factor. Uh, one with a big, wider screen, it seems. So, I don't really like how this device is presented, though. I don't like the Android goes super. Mm, I just don't like the form factor. The buttons look very small. The D pad looks uncomfortable, and the joysticks don't look comfortable to use. Who knows? I may be wrong. Okay. So, that's really it. Thanks for watching. See you next week, hopefully. Hopefully I don't miss an upload again. Okay, bye.